Here's this Laurie of Laurie's Sewing, So and So, Sewing and Gardening. Um, I wanted to talk, I've got a couple packages here to open, and I wanted to talk about this. Um, the last time I did a video, which I will link below this one in the description box, I opened this 36 um, set, 36 colors of thread, and I didn't show it on film, but I had a really hard time finding the end on this one, and I fear it's going to be the same for a large number of these. I do have the blue on sitting on George right now. It's the thread that I have in my Bernina. It was fine. I didn't have any difficulty. But if I just randomly choose a color, like this one, well, I can see, I think, I don't know. See, look at this right here. It's got that. It's not the best set of thread. It does so well. <laughs> this one's another one that doesn't have um, a very easily found end. Um, and I won't waste my time. This is bothering me. I want to see what this is about. Maybe that's where they attached it or something. I'm not throwing this away. It goes in my um, cabbage thread, both cabbage thread. I'm, I've kind of combined it because these items, except for this, these items get used in small projects or I use them as filler for other small projects. But anyway, so I wanted to point that out. I do like the colors, but I have a feeling I'm going to be purchasing some different thread. Okay, so here's the first one. I think I know what this is. Um, you guys may remember I am making jumpers and this is the original pattern that we were going to use and it's basically going to be a combination of these two. We're going to redefine this neckline by sort of shaping it like this one but not as low as this one. My dress will be way past this length right here. I want it all the way down to the ground and that's what I want and it will then also be it will be slightly shortened for my oldest daughter Candace. Uh, her back neck to finished hem preference is 33 inches. The deal with this particular pattern is the small size starts at a 10. And I believe that there for a second. My youngest daughter is a size four. So I think that's what this is right here. I had to just do a completely different pattern because of course the other one doesn't come in a smaller size. Yes, here we go. Okay, so this is what this looks like. Evidently this um, version is not available in here, which to me means it's been cut, which I will soon find out. Thankfully, I was looking at this one right here, view B, and small is size 4. There is a seam down the front, as you can see, on the front of the pattern. And if we look, it's hard to tell, that's all I'm going to say. But there is a seam that runs down the front. That's what she was hoping for, because those jumpers at that store in Edmonds, Washington, had that seam down the front. So, and these are also pullover, I think. Yes, okay, so here's that seam right there. And this is the 
front of C or D. So it says pullover, slightly A-line jumper with or without patch pockets, and she doesn't want the pockets, has front bust darts. Views A and B have a round neckline, and view C and D have a square neckline. And she was hoping for the rounded neckline. So there's this one, and then I'll just have to get busy Oops, cutting out. Oh dear. Ugh, cutting out the pattern pieces. All right, the next item is probably something else for Jessica. We went shopping at Joanne Fabrics last week and we were looking for the fabrics for the jumpers that I'm going to be making. And we decided that she also would like to have like a little lightweight uh, lacy looking top and she found some eyelet which I thought was on sale someone had moved it from the sale section in the front of the store um, and put it in with you know the 30% 40% 50% off fabrics at Joanne Fabrics in Linwood Washington and <laughs> I just happily carried it back to the cutting table and while we were waiting and I was sort of organizing all my fabrics and thinking in my head I need three of these and four of those uh, I happened to look at the price it was not on sale and it was thirty dollars a yard so I said no so I went to Amazon and I found if I'm not mistaken it was under five dollars a yard so we're gonna see how cheesy it looks it may be just fine and I'm trying to remember what the cost was but it is hundred percent cotton it is white eyelet I don't see the price listed, but it's the floral vine, very traditional uh, white cotton eyelet that you know we all grew up with, and it's just beautiful. Oh, it feels so wonderful. It I've never yeah this is wonderful. Um, then you guys can't see there it is right there. So if I keep my hands up here, we're not off camera. But anyway, I just wanted you to see this little chevron design. It's very pretty, uh, but it does require that you pay attention. You wouldn't want to have some pieces cut one way and then the other cut the opposite. I don't think that would look very nice. So if you recall, this was Jessica's uh, fabric for her jumper which I think will be really cute. It is a flannel. It does look like kind of like a tweed, but it's just the print and it's it's really sweet. I will have to pre-wash this fabric uh, being 100% cotton. I don't want to take any chances that after I get it made, it's going to shrink. Since I'm probably going to have to adjust the size four uh, to fit her anyway. Okay, so then this one of course is for Candace. And this one is for me. I will look like a watery garden. <laughs> it's fine. All right, so there's all of that, which I will set aside. So I went digging through my closet looking for clothes that I haven't worn in a while. I'm going to practice what I preach, which is I'm going to reuse all this denim. I'm going to make one, two, maybe three uh, different size tote bags. 
but I'm going to personalize them in some way. So I have three pairs of really scrunchy old jeans that I don't wear. I can't believe I ever wore anything this color before. And the way you disassemble jeans is just up to you. If you want to try to cut through seams or um, if you want to just cut the legs off and then try to do something with that, that's your way. It's, it's your, your decision. Um, I think I want to retain the pockets. They are nice pockets. So I'm going to use some heavy duty scissors to remove these pockets. I think I'll leave myself a little bit of a seam allowance and I'm just going to cut. some squares because I know I need to reassemble this fabric um, I don't think this is yeah this would be the width right here and it's too narrow so my plan <clears throat> at the moment is Right, I'm going to cut. I don't want to be too ridiculous. That's the other thing. If I make this difficult and hard and too technical, I know for myself I won't do it. Um, I want to enjoy the process of creating the tote bag. So I'm not going to use my rotary cutter to make these perfectly straight. This isn't a quilt and it's not an item of clothing. It's not an apparel item. So I'm going to use a line down here under where this ribbon is. So about right here. And I'm going to line it up. I'm going to line it up with my mat up here. I'm just going to casually cut from here to here, aiming for that line right there. So there's one section. I'm going to do the same thing all the way up. And I will be reassembling these pieces of fabric. Let's see if I wanted this to be the same and just stack it right on top and cut again in their horns. And then this one. Alright, 
right, so here I have a number. Let's see, one, two, three. I have eight pieces of this denim from one leg, and I'm going to do the exact same thing to this leg, but I'm also going to do the exact same thing to a darker piece of denim. So here we go, just going to remove the pockets. Alright, so the fabric has been cut and pretty much sized up the way I want it as far as pieces go. I may make them smaller or I may add to these to make them bigger at this point. I don't know. I'm still kind of in the in my head design phase. So I have four pockets, two from each set each pair of jeans. I also have the Levi Strauss and Company original riveted quality clothing label that I may or may not use. Probably will though. It's kind of kind of a fun little thing there. The the main thing I want to do is choose my my thread. I want to decide am I going to go with the red? Am I going to go with matching? Am I going to go with yellow or am I just going to go completely off the rails and choose a different color? So of course I have that kind of iffy orange. Then I have that what everybody tends to associate with jeans, this, this yellow. Of course I also have a neon, but I tend to go more for muted or pretty colors like pink or even a teal or sometimes like a soft sagey green which I think would get lost in there and I don't want to use white it's white I'm trying to reserve as my almost everyday construction color so um, I don't think I'm gonna go with a black or a brown this dusty, no, oh, it's a little bit too, too muted. I think the sage is a little bit too, I, I just fear it would disappear. And then I, I do have a deep green, but I think it would also disappear. Um, this is kind of a fun color, and I'm waffling around on that. This is too samey-samey. Uh, the reason I'm waffling is I kind of like it, but at the same time, would I get sick of it after a while? Probably. Okay, guys, so I am back from a shopping trip where I found this it was a pretty good price I bought it at Joanne um, I opted to not use a bag so when she handed me my receipt uh, let's see hmm I took both items huh oh I think I know where the receipt is um, I want to say it was like $4.99 yeah it was so each one of these was $4.99 at Joanne. I did not apply a coupon. Um, but this is the uh, Pellon Fusible Midweight Interfacing. So it's really good to use for um, heavier fabrics like corduroy, chino, poplin, um, denim. Clearly would be a, a perfect choice for this. I didn't buy a whole lot of it. I don't normally use this weight. But since I'm going to be making a, I can't say a bag, I may be doing more than one, um, I wanted to have a, an appropriate weight interfacing. And I did want it to be fusible. 
sometimes I don't mind using a spray. Sometimes it's just kind of like, do I really want to deal with the fumes and the overspray when all I would have to do is press it on. And in real life, you know, the iron's on anyway, so I might as well. That's my justification for buying that. Okay, so I also located two patterns that have a top and a bottom, a skirt and a, a, a skirt, a wrap skirt with a ruffle around the outer edges and then a top that buttons down the front and is shaped like a princess bodice on a, on a dress. That's what the top of this particular pattern looks like. I ordered some more of the eyelet for the skirt. I'm almost kind of thinking because of how light blue this is, I might actually go with a red. This right here says me. Either teal and pink or whatever that oceanic blue and red or this color blue and red I really really like so now I have to decide earlier I was thinking that I would mix and match some of this with some of this but now I'm kind of thinking nah. the only thing I have to be aware of is there's a lot of stretch this way let's just see what it is so if this is one inch, it, which it is, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and a little smidge. Okay, if I stretch it, even just a little bit, I can get all the way over to almost nine. So that's a lot. Um, I'm going to want the bag to be oriented so that this is the top and this is the bottom, not this is the top and this is the bottom because as I put items in the tote bag it will stretch 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 what I would prefer is that it stretch 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 and not up and down so as long as I check that I think I'm good to go the other thing I want to do is I want to take some little pieces of the fabrics that I have I'll give you an example here if I can reach it real well this is kind of my collection of fabrics plastic bin and if I'm going to be doing red then I kind of want something that would be a cute reflection with the red either it looks Cute. That's too Christmassy. This is too pink. I've got some green. I've got some blue. Um, I'm looking for design element. Oh, that might be cute. And that's a heavy fabric. It doesn't look like it. It really doesn't, but it is. It kind of has that cute vibe. And then I have some ants. And what else do I have? Okay, let's just kind of, we'll just look at those for a minute. Okay. This is really cute. It's a lighter weight stitch and sparkle fabric. It has ants. It's part of Marie's Picnic collection. I don't even know if this is still available. I bought it on, um, Amazon and I'll just hold it up so you can get a good picture of ants and flowers and leaves. It's just a cute print. But it is a lightweight cotton and it's it's really perfect for summertime shorts or um, you know anything like a little top, a nightgown even. I don't know if you'd want to have ants on your nightgown, but the weight of the fabric is that that kind of weight. So I like it, but this is a heavier, heavier fabric. And I honestly don't remember the, um, 
I don't know who it's by. So it's a nice heavyweight cotton. And while it doesn't really seem like there's a deep shade that would compl be complemented by red, I still think it's cute and I like it. So probably what I am going to do is make my handles out of this. So it will have these cute little rose print handles and the bag itself will be made from the denim. Load up my machine with the red thread. I'm not going to change out the bobbin because it's not going to bother me if the bobbin is pink. Just isn't going to bother me. I'll use that bobbin up and then I'll just use a different bobbin. Okay, where is the end? Here it is. Now see, now some of these are perfectly set up for you to, to figure out where the end is. And then you just get it and you're good to go. And the vast majority of them are not. So it's a little <laughs> irritating. I guess everything in life can't be absolutely perfect all of the time. You just have to accept it and move on. All right, so now I want to decide which is the right side and which is the wrong side of these pieces of fabric. It's so hard to tell, but I think right side, right side, yeah. All right, and I'm just going to take some fabrics and stitch them together. disclosure I had to switch out that that needle that I had it was a um, 9014 universal needle and I'm going to switch it out to um, the Schmetz jeans denim which is a hundred sixteen sized let's see if we can get this to even remotely look like it's gonna do something I don't think so <laughs> whoa there we go maybe Pieces of denim. I have these two pockets. I have this patch, and my plan originally had been to make the handles out of this fabric. And then I thought, well, wait a minute. I have a lot of leftover fabric here. Okay, so at the moment I've decided to stitch some 
ticking to the pieces of denim that I have finished. While I was sewing up this pile, I was also doing some adjusting. I still had some thread breaking and some issues and I decided that in some of the cases where the thread just wasn't laying down the way I wanted it to, I would just do a top stitch to help secure the intersection between the ticking and the denim. But then I also have these two pieces left that I didn't cut ticking for and I think what I'm going to do with these two is uh, put different fabric with them just to be random. So I need to decide do I want to use this one which I'm really leaning toward. I also have some of this one which looks really pretty with the denim and I think I have a little bit of this, which is kind of a, a teal, yeah, teal stripey, which may or may not look good with the ticking. I think I need a little bit bigger print uh, to go with the stripe. And I could also choose the pink except that it, ha it also has a stripe in it which eliminates that one so at this point I am going to use this fabric to attach to these two pieces of fabric And yes, I am pulling every single solitary bit of thread off of the bobbin because I don't want this bobbin thread right here. Oops. I don't want it to get confused in my regular sewing stash. So I'm going to pull it all off and I'm going to put it in my thread catching basket. That's a lot. But I can't risk it if it's the thread. So that goes with all the rest of my thread scraps and I'll rewind my bobbin using 
I have some pink Vitamin thread. We're gonna use this. The difference in the way that this feels and that awful thread that I just took off the machine feels is definitely something you can feel with your hand. Fingers crossed. Okay, I'm going to switch my stitch to a zigzag and I'm going to make it very wide. Well, I will not lie, I feel so much better knowing that George was not at fault or not having problems and that the issue was 100% the thread. So as you can see, right here on the back, the red around the pocket is the Luxbond thread and the pink is Guterman thread. Huge, huge difference. All right. <clears throat> now I need to decide where I will be putting the patch. <laughs> that's a little wonky, but that's okay. Big long stitches. So there's our patch right there. I think it's really cute. I think it's going to be perfect. Now what I'm going to do is stitch these right sides together. I will stitch along this side seam right here and then I'm going to stitch across the bottom. But before I do any of that, I have to draw the boxed bottoms out on the bag. And I'm just going to use a Sharpie. And I'm going to use the measurements on my table here. Okay, so I want two inches. So here's two, and here's two. So all I have to do is connect those like so. I'll be cutting that out. I'll do the same thing on this side. So one, two and then one, two, there we go. Okay, 
Now I have to pin it the way it was when I cut out the box bottom. And on the fold here, I'm going to go ahead and take a seam allowance because I did across the bottom and my boxed bottom cutout won't match if I don't. And that's okay. This will add a little strength to the bag. Now we're going to pull these two cut corners apart. So this one and this one. And I want to line up this bottom seam allowance with this, well, this in this case, the folded seam allowance. They need to be sitting right on top of each other like so. And we'll pin it. Like so, and stitch. I'm not calling out specific seam allowances because I have decided to call this bag the No Rhyme or Reason bag. And I'm thinking while these measurements need to be consistent, so if I'm doing a box bottom on this side, it needs to be the same on this side. But in your case, I feel like you could decide, do you want to do a half inch? Do you want to do a five eighths of an inch? However you want your seam allowances to be on this type of bag really is up to you. But it does feel like it matches the name I've come up with. The No Rhyme or Reason. It's really cute. So far I'm really liking it. The only issue I've had is with the thread. <clears throat> and the relief I feel knowing it's not George, that it is indeed the thread, is just huge. Alright, are we ready to turn our bag right side out? I know I am. Let me give it a quick snap. Okay. How cute is this? I, okay, so this is the strap fabric. And even if I wanted to, I could put a band of this across the top to finish off this raw edge. I might do that since I've not done one like that before. So the thing I need to do in that case would be to um, stabilize the top, which I could easily do even though I've stitched it already. I can take some of the here it is buried under piles of fabric. I could take some of this heavy duty fusible interfacing. non-fabric scissors it's 
very thick and just cut enough to go around so one let's see what is this two pieces of this oh it's, it's folded up there okay perfect so we'll cut again I don't use my fabric scissors on fusible interfacing because it has a glue on it And there'll be a little overlap, that's fine, no problem. Alrighty. This is gonna be a great market bag. It, uh, it's a good size. I can see myself carrying it um, comfortably with um, food items in it. And the stretch is west-east instead of you know it won't just get heavier and heavier and heavier with the stretch going this direction so see it's like that okay so I am going to go press this down and that will stop basically all stretch in this section across the top it will just stop it there won't be any stretch whatsoever which will give me the ability to put a woven fabric on top of this and it won't be wonky. It won't come undone. It won't get all wavy and lettucey. Um, the, the stitches won't break after a few uses because this doesn't stretch and this does stretch as I said prior to a, attaching the fusible interfacing. This fabric here is quite stretchy but with the interfacing it won't stretch at all just like this right here. Okay, so that's coming up. I have to iron or warm up my iron and get this on, and we'll just go from there. these with my iron. Now I'm going to stitch them together to make one big long strip to go across the top. So let me get that part done and again just picking a seam allowance I'm not being driven by rules.
to the inside. I love the fact that this gives it sort of a faced look. What a great idea. It looks lined and yet it's not lined. How fun. Huh. So when I... I don't want things getting caught in there so I will need to stitch right along here which is fine because that's about where my handles will go and I, I like that I like that idea I have the two pieces are put together they're not stitched up yet but I'm planning to stitch right along the folded edges all the way down I don't know how much of this I'm going to use but I'm reluctant to cut it Oh, before I do, I will be folding in the raw edge on the short edges on both, like so. I decided to use some Elmer's glue, like I usually do on some of my projects. Uh, it's just your basic school glue, glue stick. Um, I just, it's a little tacky right now, but I just put some on the back and kind of press with my hand, let it dry for a few seconds. I do have one pin right here, but this is the last of the, the four stitching areas that I need to do to get this handle on and I wanted to try the Elmer's glue and just see if it works on a heavy fabric like this denim is. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a go, we'll see what happens and this then that's it. Once this is stitched we are done. Now I did want to point out I have discovered that when you're sewing them on in this manner when you've already put the bag together and like me forgot I just didn't even think about the handle um, and you have to stitch it in this way if you start on the left side and you work your way down and then across and then back up and then stitch in reverse if you can to back where you started that is so much better after all that silly business all right, I'm going to start on the left, slip this handle underneath, okay, and stitch. Oh, I'm still in a zigzag. from the reverse. And I'm done. Et voila.
guys I hope you enjoyed this tutorial it was kind of a tutorial on how to take something from your stash or something from your closet something from your supplies and make something that you don't have to pay extra to have. It folds up nicely. Um, I think it would fit in the bag that I use to go shopping, which is this one. Currently, I am using the Forest Friends fabric bag that I made. I'll try to remember to pop up somewhere here the McCall's pattern number for this one. This is that one that has the zipper top that we just recently did. It has the recessed zipper. And then I have included a little, I don't know what you call it, a purse lanyard with a lobster claw on the inside of mine. It's not part of the pattern. And additionally, I have put a ring on the outside in case I needed to include something out here. I don't know. I thought it was kind of cute anyway. And the front pocket. But this is the largest size off of that particular pattern. And I like it because it's very deep, very roomy. It does have an interior pocket right here. I can get just about anything I want. I have all my stuff in here, plus now I have this new tote bag. And I have several other tote bags that I can also include in here. They're not in this room at the moment, but it, as you can see, and this is a big, huge tote bag. So if I go shopping, I have this right here ready to go and I love that. I don't have to worry that I won't have a way to get my grocery purchases from the store to my vehicle and that is it's happened to me a few times I don't mind paying for a bag when I forget but I don't know that that's going to become something I want to continue to do when we have our full-on full state uh, plastic bag ban which I am in complete support of but I need to be prepared so having one in my bag ready to go makes me feel a little bit more secure all right so that's it for this video I am going to spend some time cleaning my sewing room it is a disaster I if I decide to include some of that video I know sometimes that can be really fun to watch I find it very therapeutic to watch people clean and put things away. Um, so I'm going to probably do a little bit of filming on that before I start editing. And um, if it works out, I'll include it at the end of this video. And if it doesn't, then I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you have not already subscribed, please consider doing so. And we'll see you again. Thanks. Bye.